Hello everyone. Welcome to AWS. My name is RK Sai. I'm Enterprise Support Lead, supporting the ISV customers in US West and also a cost optimization evangelist here. Uh, today we are going to have a quick chat with Ali to learn about new enterprise dashboard called KPI dashboard. Hi Ali, do you want to quickly introduce yourself and talk about what problem are we trying to solve with this new KPI dashboard? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, RK. So hi, everyone. My name is Ali. I'm a senior commercial architect on the optics team. I like to say that my team has the best job. Our team's whole role is to help AWS's largest customers identify ways to run more efficiently. And by working with customers, I identified that as a customer, as they scale, it's harder to identify where within your organization opportunities lie. And the KPI dashboard came out of this. The KPI dashboard helps your organization combine kind of the DevOps and IT infrastructure with the finance and C-suite aspects of it that you need to be able to first identify an opportunity, quantify the impact of it, but then be able to drill down and most importantly, take action. One of the hardest things as a customer myself was seeing a KPI that wasn't actionable. If I'm just seeing and given a number and saying I have X percent of adoption of something, how do I get it further? How do I get it to the point that I can actually influence now? And that's what the KPI dashboard is here to do. Awesome. Yeah, customers always have a wish to cost optimize, but just don't know where to start, which KPI to uh, hit upon. So how will this dashboard help discover the right goals to make it actionable, really? Uh, goals are always something that you want to reassess as your organization scales and as your team's priorities change. So what we have in the KPI tracker is just some getting started goals and some getting started KPIs that you can track. It's meant to be 100% customizable, so you can bring in additional ones. Say if you're looking at uh, right sizing, you could bring in compute optimizer data and actually add a module or a metric around that goal. Uh, for the dashboard, we actually started with some attainable goals. These goals are meant to be ones that we see across a variety of set of customers that are actually something that they can get to or are already reaching so that it's one, achievable, but two, something that you can actually set yourself. And so let's take an example right now, uh, Graviton. This is set at a 20% goal. And if we see here, we see some teams with a huge adoption of it and other teams with no adoption. One of the things I like to first do within the dashboard is actually go back and to look at it from a holistic level. So you can drop it down and see it across all of your accounts and see kind of where you stand today. If we were to look at this use case right here, we can see that it's about, <laughs> give it a little bit of a time here. It's about a 2%. So that one account that we saw when we grouped it by account is probably making up majority of this. This shows that there's a you know a larger opportunity, but maybe 20% isn't the right goal to set here. So you can actually go into the KPI goals tracker here and adjust your goal to what you think it should be. So RK, if you were to pick a goal here, uh, maybe something a little bit less than 20%, what would you set? I think Graviton is a good one. Uh, I've seen a lot of customers trying to think about Graviton as an opportunity to cost optimize. So it would be interesting to see uh, how one can take advantage of that. Definitely. So let's just say that they're at 2%. Let's maybe adjust their goal to be 10%. So it's a little bit more achievable. And now that we know, you know, if they were to get an additional 8%, is it worth them looking into? And so going back into the dashboard, we were able to first set that custom goal now of 10%, started at 20%, but it was a little bit high based on their current adoption. And so if we drill down now to see what that looks like now with the 10% goal, which you can see it updated right there. It's, they need about 8% more to get to that. And so if they were to get 8% more down here, what you can actually come down and see is what is the actual impact on my bill? What is actual savings I could expect or estimate if I got to that 10%? So they're at 2% now. If they were to make it to 10% of a Graviton coverage, they would save an additional 250 to 350 a month which is in terms of the size of this sample account here, a significant amount. And so I'd say it's something that's worth looking into and we definitely want to want to take it further. And so uh, this is probably the view that you can say up for a leader or maybe an initial FinOps view is a good getting starting point. But now if you actually want to go talk to your team. So let's just say that you run FinOps at your organization 
and you want to say that this is an opportunity. If you go to the EC2 tab now here, we can actually break this opportunity down to understand what it actually is, where it is within your organization, and some different resources that they can use to take it further. So I should be able to drill down uh, which account can give me the most savings and uh, who do I get in touch with um, so I can evangelize further on this idea? Exactly. And so if we go here, the first thing that we can see is, you know, what your current opportunity is. And as what we can see on the first KPI page, uh, it was pretty clear that one account was the heavy user of it. And so we can see that the makeup here across the board is mainly running other, which is a majority of your Intel instances. But we also see some AMD adoption, which is another um, optimization area where you still get some savings. In terms of Graviton, though, we don't see much going on here. And you can tell that the savings, they've already gotten about $100 a month on average. So they are already getting some savings. So first, I'd say recognize those savings and those wins and use the team here to figure out maybe what they did to adopt it and bring that to some of your other teams. But actually figuring out what other teams you might want to look into you want to come down to the bottom area down here where you can drill down into the actual recommendations for where your opportunity lies. What you can see here on the left hand side is the top opportunity by instance family. You know, some people want to start with just looking at an instance family or um, maybe even a specific account to get started with. And so if we want to say by instance family, you could look at it here and you could actually see across all of the instance families, here's where it, here's where your opportunity lies. But let's just say that we wanna look at it more by an account level first. And so you can actually drill down here and see where your top opportunity is across your accounts. Great, I think I think that, that, that will nail down where exactly one should go to really talk to, or at least start conversations around um, graviton migration and also talk about what kind of impact it may have. I think this is great. I mean, the visibility that one can get, um, especially the C-suite and the uh, finance folks, I think will definitely appreciate um, an initiative or a dashboard like this, where they can easily play around and understand, hey, you know what, uh, for this year, let's have this one, two, three goals. And be able to track on that is another, um, I would say cream on the cake type thing for me. Definitely. And so if we looked across the board here, um, you know, you can see your opportunity by um, now by those accounts. Let's take maybe your largest opportunity and it looks to be an account that's growing in their usage. So you can actually click on the visual mm -hmm. and it lets, lets you drill down then into that specific use case. And so now we've clicked on this and there's my favorite piece down below here where you can actually see the down to a resource level, what those actual resources are. So you can see the instance ID, the instance family, what the latest Graviton equivalent of it would be and what the current instance type it's running on. This lets you see exactly kind of the picture of what's running there now, what's the Graviton example that they might wanna look into or the best Graviton fit and what's the savings potential if they were to take action on this? So you can now go to your team with a short list of where the largest opportunities lie and get them started in a more targeted way. Got it. Yeah, this is great. I mean, just quick question. So does all these numbers go after the on-demand pricing or uh, how are you managing to say it's gonna be X amount of savings when somebody migrates yes. from one cloud down to the other? That's, that's a great question. And one of the things that I found is you always want to say that these are estimates and using assumptions, because if you get too granular, you can get caught up in the weeds of a nickel and a dime here and there. So what we typically like to say is a Graviton um, is a 10% savings over AMD, 20% over your Intel, and the savings could vary slightly. If it's a previous generation, it could be even more. And when we're looking at this, we're actually excluding spot in RIs and EC2 instant savings plans that could potentially actually cost you, um, could potentially get you a different savings value or cause some of your commits to go unused if you actually adopted it. So for just the getting started use cases, we're looking only at your on-demand and your compute savings plans and at the rates you're currently getting today. So your savings plan rate and your on-demand rate. 
The reason for that is, is we find it's pretty um, on par with on-demand for savings plans as well, too, that you have about a 20% savings over Intel for your Graviton savings plans, too. Awesome. Yeah, the, the, I think this is great stuff you, um, you guys have done. And I think um, this also shows an example of how AWS listens into the customer feedback on various mechanisms to build best practices. And this reflects on various different KPIs that might have helped different customers to cost optimize uh, at scale. So I think this is a great start and I'm, I'm excited that we have launched this out to the customers to take benefit and uh, we'll look forward to uh, share additional tidbits around uh, this dashboard and usage in the future. Thank you. Thanks, RK. And, and thanks for bringing me on and walking through the different use cases so we could share this with our customers. Cheers. Thank you, everyone.